Masanobu Fukuoka was uh, born in 1913 in a small village in Japan, where he was a grew up as a rice farmer, but then was trained as a plant pathologist. He, he took a job in his early 20s and went to uh, Yokohama, where he inspected plants that were coming into and leaving Japan. And while he was there, he he uh, uh, partied quite a bit and had led a fairly fast life and actually had had to be had a breakdown and went into the hospital for a while um, but as just as he was recovering from that he had a flash of insight one morning and he 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 saw nature as he describes it he said he saw nature in its true form and it was perfect looked at each of the different agricultural techniques and he went to, he asked the question now why are we doing this again walked in nature quite a bit and used nature as the guide he stopped plowing for example because in nature the soil isn't plowed he stopped using chemicals uh, he even grows rice without flooding the field he's probably the only farmer in Japan that grows rice without uh, flooding the rice fields so one by one, he peeled away the unnecessary agricultural practices. So his method, the way he developed it, was, was basically the usual way is, is to say, well, how about if I try this and how about if I try that? But his way was exactly the opposite. He said, well, what if, what if we didn't do this and what if we didn't do that? He was able eventually to achieve yields in his rice and barley fields that were comparable or superior to his neighbors, but without using all of the benefits of, you know, human uh, ingenuity like plowing, like tractors in the neighbor's fields, the soil would get uh, more and more worn out each year. And in his fields, without using any of those things, the soil actually improved, got better and better. The soil structure went back to more of a natural layered structure and just increased with organic matter. In general, he uses plants to do the uh, soil improvement. He started with deep-rooted plants like daikon and burdock and dandelion, ones that would have roots that would go down and open up the soil and bring nutrients up from the subsurface to the top. Then he added the ground cover of white clover, which has the ability to take nitrogen from out of the air and put it into the soil. And then uh, weeds started coming up along with it, which he welcomed, and he planted mustard and daikon, and they reseeded themselves and went almost rampant throughout the orchard. And, these are, and uh, buckwheat was another very good uh, plant that he added, and soon this ground cover was just going by itself and improving the soil year after year. And then he planted nitrogen-fixing trees, uh, mainly acacia trees, to improve the soil deep down. So when you walk through his orchard, it's truly amazing. For one thing, it has the structure of a natural forest. It has got the canopy trees, which are uh, the acacia trees and nut citrus is the main is the main uh, cash crop. There's many shrubs, often producing food. The ground cover is the clover, the weeds, the uh, the, the buckwheat, and a lot of medicinal plants.
somebody asked him, I remember, asked him, so what do you do for insect control? And he goes, I don't do anything. It's created the habitat for all the insects. All the insects are welcome. They all have, have a role to play. So when the aphids wipe out a section of the, of the uh, rice field, it's usually the weakest rice that they attack first. The predators are right there because their habitat is there. So it actually is a kind of a beneficial form of pruning of the, of the weakest plants. This is just nature's cycle. All of this was given to us for free. We plow to get rid of the weeds, and we actually cause the weeds to come up, so we have to keep plowing. Runs down the organic matter, and then we have to fertilize, which was given to us without any effort before with the natural ground cover and so forth, and the animals running around. You know, we wipe out the plants and then spray for insect control, and then we've taken insect control on ourselves forevermore. We can't beat the natural balance, and it doesn't, it doesn't take any effort. You know, one thing he talked about the way farmers in the old days had time. In fact, in the winter, they would take off for several months. And during that time, they, had, they could walk in the fields, they could spend time with their families, they could write, sit on the porch and write poetry. But there's no time anymore in modern agriculture. The farmer is just so busy because they're busy taking care of the problems that farmers have created on their own. In the, in the old days, uh, a family of four in Japan could, could live and grow almost everything they needed, all the food and the materials they needed for building and so forth, on a half an acre. And, and Fukuoka's hope for the future would be that there would be a redistribution of people back to the land and, and natural farms everywhere. People are, are hungry for this kind of way of life. There's, uh, without going into all of the problems that we all face in the modern society, the environmental problems, and also there's the problem of the uh, human spirit. There's no, there's no anchor. The anchor for Fuku, Mr. Fukuoka was, was nature itself and the fact that people are separated from nature. It's a delightful book. You don't have to be a farmer or to appreciate this book. He tells the story of how he came to farm this way and his various experiences. And he's always, you know, some of the stories are quite funny and delightful. It's like taking a trip to the countryside in Japan.